YouTube channel All About VNSA. In this video, we are going to discuss about another type of operator which is known as implication operator. So in our previous videos, we have seen about this delay operator where we are using hash hash symbol for introducing the delay. So we were using this particular symbol for introducing the delay. For let's say example, uh, if A becomes high in some clock cycle, uh, in some positive edge or negative uh, edge of the clock cycle, then hash hash to B. That means after two clock cycles, B should be high. So this was the thing which we have said. And if A gets failed, then the assertion with will gets uh, failed. Okay. So if A is low at the particular instance of clock, then your assertion will get failed. And if A is passed, then after two clock cycles, B will be passed. Then assertion will be passed. Okay. Now, if A is getting zero at some particular clock edge or at some evaluation point if A is equal to zero, then assertion will definitely get failed. Now, in this particular case, in the case of implication operator, which we are going to discuss now, what happens is if this particular first variable is low, that is it is false, then assertion will not get failed. Assertion will give a success which, which is known as vicious success. Okay. That means assertion is not getting failed. Okay. Just your a variable a is equal to zero. So that's why your assertion is not getting failed and it is not going to pass also. It is a partial success in this case of implication operators. Okay. So in the case of implication operator, so we are going to discuss a operator which is known as implication operator. So these are also the delay operators only. So implication operators. So in the implication operators, again, these are classified into two types. One is consecutive. Sorry, one is uh, overlapping and uh, another is non-overlapping and another is non-overlapping. So the implication operators are again classified into two types. One is overlapping implication operator and another, another is uh, non-overlapping implication operator. Let's say, let's see the example of your uh, overlapping implication operator, overlapping implication operator example implication operator the symbol for your overlapping implication operator is this this is the symbol of your overlapping implication operator and sidewise we will see the example for your no normal uh, delay operator your normal delay operator that is hash hash symbol okay now so we will write a sequence let's say the sequence name is uh, sq and in this, if we take two variables, our evaluation point is the posage of clocks. So at the rate posage of clock, A hash hash to B. Sorry, uh, we are using implication operator, right? So we will write simply A implication operator B. Okay. Now here, what is happening? Hash hash. We can write A hash hash one B. Within a sequence, we can write this. Now, first let us draw a clock signal for understanding this in more clear manner. Let us draw a clock signal, which is a clock pulse. Yes. So the evaluation points are your passage of clocks. So at the positive edges of the clocks, your assertion evaluation will take place. So these are your positive edges of the clock. And so this is your clock. And uh, let's say, a is becoming high here and it is becoming low here and it is becoming high again here and it is staying high forever and let's say this is your B signal which is low here up to here and uh, it is becoming high somewhere here okay and it is again becoming zero and uh, again here it is becoming one okay so let's say this is your a and B signals. Now, first let us take your uh, delay operator. So what it is written here, A hash hash 1B. Okay, that means if A becomes high at the rate at positive, at positive edge of the clock, I will write it here, at positive edge of clock within a sequence. If A becomes high, then in the next clock cycle, B should become high. If A becomes high in the next clock cycle, B should become high or uh, otherwise your, your assertion will get failed. So what is happening here, uh, here at the first clock cycle, your normal delay operator, if you are using a delay operator, 
then your assertion will get failed here and here at the second clock cycle your assertion checking will uh, here also it is a value is equal to zero so here also it will get failed and here at the third clock cycle this is your third clock cycle your assertion checking will get started okay your assertion checking will start now you, because your a is equal to one and the next clock cycle that is at the fourth clock cycle it, it is going to check for the value of b it is going to check for the value of b so value of b is equal to zero okay the value of b is equal to zero we are not going to uh, sample the values exactly the passage of clock before the edge of the clock we are going to sample the values so the value of b is equal to zero so that's why here your assertion is going to get failed so at the third clock cycle the first assertion is the first assertion was starting and here at the fourth clock cycle the, the first assertion is going to fail okay the assertion checking got failed and in the fourth clock cycle also your assertion checking is going to start let's say this is second checking okay your second checking has been started so what is happening in the second checking and then at the next clock cycle your b was high so your second checking got passed two got passed and similarly same uh, at the fifth sixth sixth clock cycle also you, it is going to fail and at the seventh clock cycle it is going to start checking is going to start and at the eighth clock cycle the checking will get passed okay this this example we have already seen in our previous uh, exa uh, previous uh, videos okay now so let us see about this implication operator how this implication operator is working and what is this overlapping implication operator so coming to this overlapping implication operator if your variable if the first variable if the first variable are the this is your operator and you have uh, left hand side and right hand side so the uh, left hand side that is a is known as uh, your antecedent and b is known as your consequent okay so the operator the left hand side of your operator is known as antecedent and the right hand side of your operator is known as context uh, consequent now if antecedent get passed if antecedent is true in the present clock cycle then the consequent should be also be true in the same clock cycle that is mean by overlapping operator okay so i will write it here if antecedent if antecedent is true in the let's say third clock cycle in the third clock cycle for example i'm taking in the third clock cycle then the consequent then the consequent should also be true in the same clock cycle in the same clock cycle in the same clock cycle that is third clock cycle this is a requirement and one more point what we have seen so if antecedent fails if antecedent gets failed then the assertion checking uh, assertion checking is stopped and it is a vicious success or partial success then is then it is a vicious success or it is a partial success or it is a partial success so assertion checking here it is not uh, uh, true uh, it is not getting passed or it is not getting failed it is a partial success so we'll see we will try to analyze this example so what is happening here this is delay operator uh, uh, <coughs> results we will write it here overlapping operator results overlapping results now in the case of overlapping results in the first clock cycle if you see the value of a was equal to zero so that's why it is partial success we will represent this symbol partial success is represented by this symbol okay and at the second clock cycle also your value of a was equal to zero so it is not going to fail actually it is going to get partial success and in the third clock cycle your assertion assertion is going to start same as your delay operator only but in the same clock cycle your value of your value of b should be equal to high so what is here in the same clock cycle your value of b was equal to it was equal to zero so here your assertion will get failed start here only and here only it will get failed and in the fourth clock cycle here it is going to check but your value of b was equal to zero so here also it is going to fail and in the fifth clock cycle your value of a is equal to zero so it is a partial success and in the sixth clock cycle also it is going to fail and it is sorry in the sixth clock cycle you will get a partial success because the value of a is equal to zero 
and the seventh clock cycle your value of a is equal to one but your value of b was equal to zero so it is going to get failed and in the eighth clock cycle your value of a is equal to one and at the same clock cycle your value of b is also equal to one so your session is going to get passed okay let us try to take one more example for understanding this clearly uh, let's say let me take one more example so again let's say your clock This is your clock pulse. This is first, second, third, fourth, five. I'm considering only positive edges of the clock. The sampling event is your positive edges of the clock. I'm considering it. So these are your positive edges of the clock. Now, let's say we have two variables. One is A and B. So let's say A is equal to zero and B is becoming high here. And it is again becoming zero and it is becoming high okay and let's say this is your b so b was equal to zero and it is becoming high here and again it is becoming zero and zero only. okay now at the first clock cycle your assertion is not going to get failed it, you are going to get a partial success at the first clock cycle and the second clock cycle also you are going to get a partial success and at the third clock cycle your, uh, your assertion is going to start checking and the value of a was equal to one, but the value of b was equal to zero. So your assertion will get failed. And the fourth clock cycle, your value of a is equal to one. And the value of b is also equal to one. So your assertion is going to get passed here. And the value, uh, the clock h5, your value of a is equal to zero. And the value of b is also equal to zero. Okay, a is equal to zero, no need of checking at b or h. So, okay, you will get a partial success. And sixth clock cycle also, partial success. And at the seventh clock cycle, it is going to get failed because the value of B is equal to zero. So this is how your implication operator, that is overlapping implication works. So that's all for this particular video. So if you like this particular video, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel, All About VSA. Thank you.